Okay, so for this next lesson, we're going to talk about how we classify matter. And then we'll review this again on the lesson after this toward the end. Um, so first thing foremost, matter, when we take a look at it, it can be broken down into two different possibilities. Is it uniform throughout or it's not? And if it's uniform throughout, um, sorry, if it's not uniform throughout, we, we call that a heterogeneous mixture. And so that hetero concept is something you remember from hopefully biology um, when you talked about heterozygous and homozygous. Hetero just means different. And so the mixture is different throughout. And homogeneous means the same, so therefore it's uniform throughout. And that's why it's a yes. So when we talk about this homogeneous being the same, does it have a variable composition inside it? Um, then we, if the answer is no, then it's a pure substance. But if it's yes, then it's probably a mixture or a solution. So whenever we look at this as an example, um, a pure substance, would, for example, would be gold. If it's just pure gold, and, and it's uh, all gold, then we can say it's a pure substance of gold. But it is possible to have a homogeneous mixture of gold. When you look at my ring, it looks homogeneous or the same throughout other than my diamonds. And the idea is, since it looks the same throughout, it is a mixture. Even though it's not a solution in this case, this is a mixture of gold and other metals that make up the metals within this ring. Um, and if it's a pure substance, one of the things that we can further analyze is that can it be separated into simpler substances? If the answer is no, then we say it's already an element, like gold. If the answer is yes, then typically it's probably a compound. And so there's a huge amount of analysis that we talk about. Homogeneous things are typically either elements, compounds, or mixtures. Okay. Now, heterogeneous, on the other hand, um, in terms of heterogeneous mixtures, um, we'll learn how to then deal with this and separate them. For the most part, there's nothing we can do with this other than um, separate this mixture on the homogeneous side as well. Um, so types of properties. There's physical properties um, that we look at when we talk about the classification of matter. And a physical property can be observed without changing a substance into another substance. So I can observe the boiling point or the temperature at which something boils. I can measure the density by actually calculating the mass or measuring the mass and, and measuring the volume and then calculating the density. And so these are what we call physical properties of matter. There are chemical properties as well um, and can only be observed when a substance is changed into another substance. Is this substance flammable? So if you're going to test if something is flammable, when you light it or ignite it, you are actually changing that structure. The methane that you burn at home, that's your natural gas at home, when you burn it, it becomes carbon dioxide and water. And so testing that um, means you've already changed it. The corrosiveness of something. So if you want to test if iron is corrosive, or in other words, it rusts, then of course you, you put it in water, the oxygen will react with it that's in the water, and of course it's going to cause it to rust. Once it rusts, it's now iron oxide. It's no longer just iron, and so you've now changed it into a different uh, substance. And likewise, we can talk about reactivity with acids. All these things, when you test it, the chemical properties, you are actually changing it just to test it. Intensive properties, on the other hand, are independent of the amount of substance that's present. And so um, when we talk about intensive properties, we're talking about density, we're talking about boiling point, we're talking about color. So no matter how much of the substance you have, the density is not going to change. It's still going to be the same. The boiling point will still boil at the same temperature, and the color is not going to change. Extensive properties, on the other hand, depend on the amount of the substance present. And so the mass of something will depend on how much substance you have, the volume, the amount of energy that's stored in there, et cetera, et cetera. These are what we call extensive properties. And for the most part on the AP exam, this is not as important, but just it's good to kind of point out in the beginning. In terms of types of changes, um, physical changes, well, these are in matter that do not change the composition of the substance. So if I change the state, the substance is still going to be gold. It's still going to be water. If I change its temperature, it's still going to be gold. It's still going to be water. If I change its volume, like a gas, 
like helium, if I change the volume of the gas, it's still the same volume. So none of these, of course, changes the physical. These are just what we call physical changes. Chemical changes, on the other hand, are chemical changes that result in new substances. So when you burn something or combustion, if you oxidize something by taking away electrons or, or putting in new electrons in there, if you decompose something by doing some kind of uh, separation of two different things like hydrogen and oxygen and water, when you se separate those into hydrogen and, and oxygen from, from water, that's called decomposition. These are all we call chemical changes. And of course, they always result in new substances. And when we deal with chemical reactions in the course, um, the reacting substances are converted to new substances. And so as long as you understand that in a chemical reaction, there's always a new substance, that's important to know in chemistry. And our job, again, just like in the demos earlier this year, is that we need to make sure we look into what the products are to give us a hint what those products may be whether we use a test of phenolphthalein, a test of an indicator, um, by looking at the gas that's evolved, it's a different color, those kinds of things we can investigate by looking into them. Um, now, of course, we talked about signs of chemical reactions. There are diff four different signs for chemical reaction. A gas evolving, so here you can see some gas evolving from some Alka-Seltzer. So yes, whenever you use Alka-Seltzer, you are actually creating an, uh, a chemical reaction in the solution. Um, when heat is absorbed or released or a change in temperature occurs, there's also another sign for chemical reaction. When you burn something, that's a chemical reaction. If there's a color change, so here's a penny that's actually being dissolved in nitric acid like we showed today in class. There's a gas that evolved, and of course there's a change in color. The solution was originally clear, and now it's green, so there's a change in color there. And then last but not least, a precipitate's form. And we'll talk about this one in more detail later, but a precipitate is where you get a solid form when you mix two, two solutions together. So precipitate is a solid being formed in a solution. We'll talk about solubility rules later. So those are all the signs of a chemical reaction. Um, and so when we talk about compounds, one of the things that we always investigate is how can we break them down into more elemental particles. And the key is using electricity. It turns out um, when you deal with compounds, Typically, they've either lost or gained electrons by then. And so to separate them, you need to add some electrons to the process to force them to separate because the electron structure is really what keeps them together. And that separates the molecules into their atom components, and you can actually break them down using electricity. Um, and electrolysis of water is really the process in which we use that electricity so water can be separated into its elements. Um, compounds must be separated, of course, by chemical means. You cannot separate them by physical means. And so that is the end of this lesson. Make sure you understand that compounds have to be separated by chemical means, and just make sure you understand those little definitions of properties because they become the language of the course. If you have any questions, come and see me.